Good afternoon, and uh, I, I do hope that some more people will come. They are on, on way due to the traffic jam today in Budapest. Uh, I think uh, some of you, uh, or some of them, uh, is, uh, are late uh, because of that. Uh, I think that, I hope that they will arrive in time as well. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thanks for the hospitality of the Karoli Gaspar uh, uh, University. Uh, we have long year and good partnership uh, with the uh, uh, Karoli Gaspar University. And uh, actually, Mr. Josef Zsengelier, who was not able to join us uh, right now, uh, is also a member of the Board of <coughs> Trustees uh, of, the, of the Foundation. Uh, let me also welcome um, you on behalf of the European Center for the, for the Responsibility to Protect, uh, which is our partner in organizing this event. And uh, those who had some time to visit our, our website uh, might have seen that the European Center was established in partnership uh, of the Budapest Center. Uh, the Leeds University and the Hague, uh, is it Hague Institute uh, for Global Justice uh, last May. And one of the co-directors of the center, Mrs. Christina Stefan, she should be with us uh, in, in some, some minutes. Uh, she will be one of the panelists of the roundtable. It is a tradition uh, that the Budapest Center organizes pre-events uh, to the Budapest uh, Human Rights Forum which is the event uh, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Hungary. And uh, in 2017, in this year, the forum will be the 10th in a row. Let's uh, wish all the best to the organizers uh, to the, of the event, and uh, we, which will take place tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. The topics of our pre-events uh, are linked to the agenda of the Budapest Human Rights Forum. We used to discuss uh, topics and challenges in the light of the principle, the responsibility to protect, which was adopted at the UN World Summit in uh, 2005. As you may know, the principle uh, intends to prevent uh, the perpetration of the bravest human rights violations, genocide, ethnic cleansing crimes against humanity and war crimes. We usually aim to facilitate um, uh, the impl implementation of the principle through our events, in that context, uh, we have set uh, on our agenda topics uh, like hate speech, the role of new media in the prevention of mass atrocities, role of journalists uh, in, uh, in prevention of genocide and countering extremism, role of education, cooperation uh, in research uh, in Africa, cooperation of the Visegrad group to prevent mass atrocities and also the capabilities of the African regional organizations uh, has been discussed. In the framework of our pre-events, we attempt to connect uh, uh, scholars and practitioners and try to generate actions. We believe that our events help sensitize the challenges, raise awareness of some horizontal aspects of the extreme human rights violations, broaden and strengthen the international platform of actors who are willing to promote the cause of mass atrocities prevention. This year, we decided to discuss the prevention of mass atrocity crimes from gender-based uh, perspective. We focus on sexual violence, as sexual violence, particularly in armed conflicts, constitute one of the most serious abuse of international humanitarian law and international human rights law. It represents grave breaches, breaches of the Geneva Conventions and uh, their first protocol. Conflict-related sexual violence is now widely acknowledged as a problem of international security. In cases of targeted attacks, it can constitute a crime against humanity and even genocide. As an example, let me call to your mind the sexual abuse of Bosnian women by Serb forces, which was qualified as crime against humanity under international law. The widespread rape of Tutsi women in Rwanda or the crimes perpetrated by the Janjaweed militia in Darfur some years ago. We can also refer to the ongoing violations in Syria, about which uh, we shall hear uh, uh, the main outcome of a case study during the round table. The victims of wartime sexual violence are not always females. Numerous times men and boys are victims. Therefore, we gave the title to our event as gender-based sexual violence. In other cases, for example, in the Palestinian-Israeli war, sexual violence is not uh, the case. The extent and intensity, as well as the forms 
of sexual violence also differ. All that shows that sexual violence is not an obligatory appearance in armed conflicts. Commanders can prohibit it, or the social justification on the armed conflict per se does not allow for combatants to commit such crimes. A lot also depends on the institutions, legal norms in the country, or the legal norms within the armed groups, whether the, comp whether the combatants perpetrate the sexual crimes or those are able to control or investigate the cases. That said, we in the Budapest Center believe that rape, any sexual violence, is not inevitable during wars. There is wide scope for doing more and accomplishing more in preventing and prosecuting sexual violence. It is possible to build institutions that enforce norms against rape. Reporting mechanisms can be improved. Prosecution of perpetrators or even commanders for sexual violence as war crimes or crimes against humanity could prove a strong means to prevent sexual violence. The international actors can also be much better prepared to support victims, recognize crimes uh, during the peacekeeping missions. Lack of host country commitment are viewed by many as a significant challenge to be addressed from the perspective of preventing abuses of gender-based sexual violence. These are some examples only to encourage all of us to do more in this field. The Budapest Center would like to avoid that this roundtable will be a one-off event. We do plan to draw conclusions from the conversation and exchange of views today. And uh, as a sort of convener, we shall be happy to organize a follow-up workshop in next February, where we shall present the completed research on sexual violations in Syria and share some recommendations which, uh, with policymakers on how to address the challenges in Syria from the perspective of sexual violence. We intend to invite representatives of international actors and provide the opportunity to exchange best practices on capacity building with the international community and discuss the next steps and concrete tasks. Of course, without funds, it, it will not be uh, possible. Therefore, we need to raise the necessary funds, but let's hope we shall be uh, successful. I would like to wish you um, uh, a useful afternoon, wish us a useful afternoon and a good exchange of, of views in the coming two, three hours. And uh, let us continue the event uh, with the presentation of the keynote speaker, uh, Mr. András Vámos uh, Goldman, uh, which afterwards will be followed by a roundtable. Uh, Mr. András Vámos Goldman, Goldman is the executive director of Justice Rapid Response, and uh, he is a former Canadian diplomat. Uh, he was selected to this position uh, uh, by uh, the GRR's uh, executive board. Uh, his career included assignments to the East African countries of Kenya, Uganda, Somalia. He uh, served in Washington, D.C., the United Nations, uh, and also he was the deputy high commissioner to South Africa. Uh, his involvement uh, with international criminal justice goes back to the late 90s. He was instrumental in the establishment of the Sierra Leone Special Court, uh, becoming the founding chair of its management committee. He also served on the Bureau of the International Criminal Court's Preparatory Committee, representing its chair, Ambassador Philip Kirsch. He holds a BA and LLB from Delos University in Halifax, uh, Canada, and uh, international and comparative law from Georgetown University in Washington. He is a member of both the Law Society of Upper Canada as well as the New York Bar. Um, we, my last, uh, my last uh, uh, comment, uh, that um, we decided to uh, record the, the today event. That means that we shall record, make records uh, of the interventions but we shall not make any record on the discussion. So any question, any answer uh, should be free and nobody has to be afraid uh, of the possibility that uh, we'll be quoted tomorrow in the newspapers. <laughs> so we wanted to uh, provide a space for free, uh, free exchange of views and uh, 
we do hope that it will be mutually beneficial uh, for everybody. Obviously, uh, the participants of the roundtable will be asked again whether they wish that we shall uh, record their, um, their interventions and uh, later on we can also agree that it will be deleted and uh, we shall put it on the YouTube uh, and then probably uh, then they will not be there or they will be there, it's, it's up to them. So, once again, thanks uh, for coming, for honoring us uh, with your uh, participation and uh, uh, once again, let me, let me wish you a nice, nice event. Thank you very much.